That's all the information we have, Charlie Alpha. Those woods cover one hell of an area, Control. We know how big the flaming woods are. Don't look for her. On our way. Over now. Denton Police. Uh, how old is she? Oh. How long has she been missing? Just a moment, madam. Fletcher, can we get Delta Tango to 15 Hill View? Uh, no, Sars. They're attending that hit and run outside the old people's flats. And get Mr. Frost. We'll have someone with you very soon, Mrs. Preston. Try not to worry. Uh, Mr. Frost isn't in his office, Sarge. Well, then put out a call. Oh, I have. He doesn't answer. A control to Detective Inspector Frost. Control to Detective Inspector Frost. Come in, please. Oh, I'll trust him to vanish when we're busy. Where's he got to? And where's Detective Constable Webster? Control to Detective Inspector Frost. Come in, please. Where were we? We were wasting our time. Stuck in Frost's car, watching a carpet warehouse. At least, I was watching. Frost, in his crumpled raincoat and the frayed jacket with the loose buttons, was snoring gently in the back seat. He was supposed to have received a tip-off about a break-in, but he always seemed to get these vague, fruitless tip-offs whenever there was paperwork to be done back at the station. He was a joke policeman, incompetent and useless. Just my luck to be stuck with him. Nothing was going to happen at the warehouse. It was all happening at Denton Woods. We'll never find out. It's like looking for a needle in a flaming shh, haystack. Shh, shh. I thought I heard something. Over there. Oh, oh God. Oh. Charlie right Alpha now. to control. We Calm found down. her. Right She's hurt bad. Come on. Come on. That's all right. It's all right. Oh. We're not for life. Come on. It's all right. Hey, what? What was that? Oh, anything happened in a warehouse? No, sir. It's an ambulance. Right. Hadn't we better be getting back to the station? Plenty of time, son. They'll call us if they want us. In the three interminable weeks I'd been with him, he'd never called me by my proper name. It was always son or the bearded wonder. I was getting fed up with his so-called funny remarks about my beard. Where's that radio? It's not hidden in your face, Fungus, is it? No, sir. You put it on the floor. So I did. Blimey. No wonder it's quiet. I forgot to switch it on. Control to Mr. Frost. Come in, please. Frost here. Over. Just a minute. Jack, where the hell have you been? We've been calling you Solly for the past half hour. Damn radio's been playing up. What's happened? Another assault and rape, Denton Woods. We're on our way. What part of the woods? You're too late, Jack. We had to call Chief Inspector Cull and dragged him out of bed on his rest day. Inspector Cull? What did you do that for? Well, what else could we do? We couldn't find you. He's spitting blood, Jack. I'd better come in. Well, before you do, call on our Mrs. Preston, 15 Hill View. A 14-year-old daughter, Karen, went out for a walk at six, hasn't returned home. 15 Hill View. An expensive house in Mock Tudor, with a sweeping drive, an ornamental fish pond, and a crying mother. Something's awful's happened to her. I know it has. Kids run away from home all the time these days, Mrs. Preston. Usually they're back next morning, cold, tired, and feeling sorry for themselves. Why should she run away? We gave her everything. She said she was going for a walk. Wouldn't be long. That was six hours ago. She's only a kid. I mean, you hear such terrible things. Where's your husband? Out looking for her. Have you got a recent photograph we could have, please? Oh, yes, I might have just a minute. Um, here. That was taken at school. Oh, yeah. Last term. Mm -hmm. It showed a well-scrubbed schoolgirl. Dark hair, brown eyes, wearing Denton comprehensive uniform. Grey shirt, green pullover and tie. She looked a lot younger than 14. Karen got any boyfriends? She's a kid. She's... She's too young for boyfriends. Fine. Uh, do you think we could have a look at Karen's room, please? Oh, yes. It, it, it's upstairs. I, I'll show you. Take a look around, son. She might have left a note. Yes, sir. She only had to ask for anything, and we gave it to her. Television, record player, anything. Sir? It was in a drawer by her bed, 
an enlarged photograph of a seaside scene showing a very well-developed girl in a bikini. The bikini was brief and barely adequate. She was spilling out of it. That is Karen? Excuse me, Mrs Preston. I hope to God it isn't, son, but nip downstairs and radio the station. Find out if the girl who was raped in Denton Woods tonight was Karen Preston. Yes, sir. It wasn't Karen. The rape victim was Paula Gray, blonde, age 20. Do you think the kid's all right, sir? Yeah, she looks the sort who can take care of herself. No boyfriends. With that figure, do me a favour. They must be putting something in their tea, I should think. Control, Mr Frost. Come in, please. What is it now? Sorry, Jack. Rush of our feet tonight. Can you get over to the purple parrot? Someone's cautioned the night porter and nicked the takings. On our way, over and out. No to purple parrot, sir? No, sir. It's an expensive nightclub and gaming house, other side of Denton Woods. All bottomless purses and topless waitresses. Two cherries in every drink. Come in, Inspector. Sit down, sit down. Ah, so what's happened, Mr. Hagen? Somebody robbing you for a change, eh? We've got a club comedian, Mr. Frost. He don't make me laugh neither. Never mind a court case. Just find the bloke who did this and let me have him. I'll see the police orphans get a good Christmas. Make a note of that, will you, Webster? Yes, sir. Very generous of you, Mr. Hagen, but we like to beat our own prisoners up, thank you. And where's your night porter? Denton Hospital. Tell me what happened. Stupidity, that's what happened. Much of our business is by cheque or credit card. But we get a fair amount of good old-fashioned cash, which I like to bank as quickly as possible. I use the night safe at Bennington's. And how'd you get it there? The car. I vary the times and I vary the route. But it's usually between midnight and three in the morning. We use a different motor each time. Sounds all right so far. Who takes it? Maskell, the night porter, and one of my boys. One of your thugs? One of my employees, a member of my internal security staff. That's what I said, one of your thugs. Go on. They're supposed to follow the procedure to the letter. We collect the money from the various tills, bring it in here, lock the door and count it. The security man fetches one of the cars to the back door while the night porter stays in here with the money and the door locks and bolted. A solid lock and a solid bolt. With the engine running, the security man taps a prearranged signal on the door. And you change the signal every night? Without fail. If it's the right signal, the porter unlocks the door, takes the money to the motor and off they go to the bank. Don't change it, Mr Hagen. It's foolproof. Well, it wasn't tonight. The porter's locked inside with three and a half thousand quid. The security burke is on his way to fetch the car when there's an urgent phone call for him in the foyer. It's supposed to be the hospital. He goes to the phone and someone says, would you hold on for a minute and I'll try and find the doctor. Who was on the phone, man or woman? A woman, supposed to be a nurse. So the cretin holds on, don't he? For nearly five flaming minutes, listen to nothing. Until he suddenly tweaks something might be wrong when he airs back here and taps the prearranged signal. What time was all this? Ten past one. No answer. He taps again. Bangs. Shouts. Then he calls me. And was the door still locked? Yeah, but from the outside this time. Took us ten minutes with a sledgehammer and chisel to open it. And surprise, surprise. Maskell out cold with a lump behind his ear and the money gone. How much? £3,476.14. pence. Well, that won't break your way. No, it's not the money, it's the principle. No one robs me and gets away with it. Find him for me, Mr Frost. I'll try, Mr Hagen. Now, where's your security man? Well, I had to send him home. He had an accident, walked into a door, smashed his nose and blacked his eye. Oh, yeah. I thought your knuckles looked sore. Falling for a trick like that, the stupid dit! Now what? There's a detective chief, Inspector Cole, and a detective sergeant Ingram to see you, Mr Hagen. Oh, send him in. Send the old damn force in. Never hear when you want him. Overkill when it's too late. Chief Inspector Cole, ultra efficient, eyes that miss nothing, walked into Hagen's office. He'd been dragged out of bed at two o'clock in the morning, but he looked immaculate. Beside him, Frost looked even more of a scarecrow. With Cull was Detective Sergeant Ingram, a year or so older than me. He looked tired. Frost, what are you doing here? This is my case. Oh, you're not going to fight over it, are you? Just find the Joker who robbed me. You can split the money up between you. You've been robbed. What a tragedy. But I'm not here about that. Do you know a girl called Paula Gray? Oh, I ought to. She's one of my strippers when she bothers to turn up. I had to cancel the midnight show because of her. She didn't turn up because she was assaulted and raped in Denton Woods. You're joking. Do I look as if I'm joking? What was she doing in the woods at this time of night? If you'd been in the office and ready to take charge, you'd have found out. Yeah, well... We'll have a word with your porter in the hospital, Mr Hagen. Hello, Sergeant Ingram. 
How's that lovely wife of yours? What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Only asking. My wife would probably be a lot happier, Mr Frost, if I was with her instead of being called out on my rest day. I resent being dragged in because you couldn't be contacted. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. You see, my radio... Yeah, we all know about your famous radio, Inspector. We'll talk about it tomorrow. My office, 10 sharp. And I'll want to see the overtime returns. 10 sharp. Right, sir. Come on, sir. Hold on, Webster. Sir? C does those overtime returns. Yes, sir. Um, I'd like a transfer from him, sir. Not now. See me tomorrow. Harry, Harry, come on, get your beard out of there. We're going to the hospital. You can't mistake a hospital smell, son. Boiled mince, cabbage and disinfectant. There you are, that's him. Let's have a look at his chart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, both ends seem to be working all right. Wake up, Charlie. The undertaker's here. Hey, huh, what? Oh, Mr Frost. This is Charlie Maskell, son. Breaking, entering, robbery and burglary. Banks robbed uh, while you wait. Now, that's all behind me now, Mr Frost. I'm working for Mr Hagen. I've gone straight. It does my heart good to hear it, Charlie. Now, what have you done with the money? Yeah, what money? The, uh, how much was it, sir? £3,476, 14p. You can keep the 14p, Charlie. Just tell us what you've done with the rest, will you? I never touched it, Mr Frost. I wouldn't dare. You don't know what Mr Hagen would do to me. Does he know you've been inside? Of course he does, on my head. Did you see the bloke who hit you? No, I felt him all right. He gives the signal, I open the door and wham, <laughs> wake up in here. It was an inside job, Charlie. <laughs> he knew the time, he knew the signal. Now, come on, did you and the security bloke arrange it between you? No, Mr Frost, as God is my witness. Oh, I, I can't talk anymore. My head's splitting. All right, Charlie. If you last the night, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. If you don't, goodbye forever. Oh. Come on, son. We weren't the only policemen in the hospital. A uniformed constable was standing outside some swimming doors marked Operating Theatre. Hello, what are you doing here? You're not with a rape victim, are you? Uh, no, sir, with hit and run. They're operating on him. Okay, keeping them busy tonight, all right. I hope they're giving us bulk rate. How old is he? He's uh, 78, sir. So is my gramophone records. Jaywalking, was he? Now, a sports car ran him down outside the Fairfield Terrace old people's flats just after one o'clock this morning. What was a 78-year-old man doing out at that time? He was on his way back home after phoning the station to complain about the sports car. And for the third night running, it had been roaring round the flats in the early hours, blaring its Colonel Bogey horn, keeping the old ones awake. As he was crossing the road, uh, it got him, knocked him down, then roared off without stopping. There's only one car around here with a Colonel Bogey horn. That's the one, sir. Arnold Pym's son. Who's Arnold Pym? Councillor Arnold Pym, former mayor of Denton, very important man. Owns the engineering works, the Denton Echo, the printing works, and chairman of our local radio station. And he's also a close friend of our divisional commander, Mr Mullet. And if that isn't enough to make you hate him, he's got a son who's a really nasty piece of work. And the son owns the sports car? That's right. How is the old boy? They're not optimistic, sir. I've got to see Mr Cole at ten tomorrow morning, so I'm not optimistic either. Come on, son. Point your beer towards the exit. We're going home. I'll ask him to phone with the minute he arrives. Mr Frost in yet, Sergeant. Haven't seen him, sir. Oh, this is too much. He goes missing for three hours last night, so I have to come in and take charge. I specifically ask him to be here dead on ten with the overtime returns, and where is he? Typical. As far as last night is concerned, Mr Carl, I understand your radio was on the blink. Yes, he's outworn that excuse. I want that radio checked the minute he's in, Sergeant. I want it checked. Yes, sir. Dinner, police. If anyone wants me, I'm in with the division commander. Mm, full of self-importance since his promotion, isn't he, Sarge? <laughs> He was just as big headed before it. Ah, sit down, Cal. Thanks. <laughs> I understand you had a busy night. Yeah. Uh, damn sight busier than it should have been, thanks to Frost. Mm. I was supposed to be off duty, but no one could find him. I'll speak to him. You're always speaking to him, sir. He doesn't do any good. I'm as anxious as you are, Carl, to get rid of. <laughs> to improve things. He's no credit to the division. He's untidy, dresses slovenly, he's rude. Paperwork's a mess. He's useless. Oh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. There's a niche for him somewhere. <laughs> Not here, but somewhere. <laughs> Couldn't you get him transferred to County HQ? A desk job? You know what his paperwork's like. I'd have to say he was suitable. They come down on me like a ton of bricks. Yeah, well, something's got to be done, sir. Mm. The men are moaning because they didn't get their overtime money last month. Frost forgot to send off the return. Have a word with him. 
And young Detective Constable Webster... I wish he'd shave off that awful beard. Yes, sir. He wants to be transferred. He's not happy working with Frost. Someone's got to work with him. Yeah, as long as he's with us, yes, sir. Sorry, what, what did you want to see me about? Yes. Um, what cases are you working on at the moment? Well, uh, the big one's the so-called masked rapist. Mm. He attacked another woman last night. Really knocked her about. She's, um, she's his sixth. Yeah. Well, I might want you to hand it over to Frost. Over my dead body? Only for a few days. Not even for a few minutes. That's all it'll take Frost to mess it up. I'm sorry, Chief Inspector, but it's necessary. That hit and run last night. It's got to be handled with kid gloves. Why, sir? Councillor Pym. He's a very influential man. Local paper, local radio. He can sway public opinion. You know how keen the Chief Constable is that we should maintain an excellent public image? It wouldn't do to get on the wrong side of Arnold Pym. Yep, yeah, but his son's as guilty as hell. Sir. Come now, Carl. We mustn't prejudge. The councillor is convinced of his son's innocence. Which puts him in a majority of one. Be that as it may, this is a case that has to be handled with tact and discretion. The councillor's due here any minute. I want to be able to assure him I've put my best man in charge of the investigation. You, Carl. Yeah. yeah. Can I speak frankly, sir? Go on. <clears throat> well, you'll be doing me no favours. If his son is found guilty, then Pym will never forgive the man who put him inside. I mean, he could ruin my career. And if his son gets off, Pym's got plenty of political enemies who'd scream that we deliberately pulled our punches. Either way, I can't win. If there's got to be a certain loser, why not give the case to Frost? Frost? Well, might be the ideal way of getting rid of him. <laughs> Come to think of it, Frost would be the perfect choice. Steady, reliable, bags of local knowledge. Yes. Yeah. A first-rate suggestion, Chief Inspector. Well done. Sorry, Webster. Mr. Carl's in with the divisional commander. But he said he'd see me this morning. Still plenty of morning left. Yes, but as soon as Frost gets Mr. here... Mr. Frost. As soon as Mr. Frost gets here, we'll be off out on some wild goose chase. Anything to get away from the overtime returns. Oh, uh, Mr. Carl! No time now, Webster. Have to be later. Oh, damn. What's so important? I want a transfer from Frost. Uh, Mr. Frost. Why? Oh, do you really need to ask? Yes. I really need to ask. Well, you've only got to look at him and listen to him. He's not a policeman, he's a joke. Three weeks, and you know all about him, don't you? What is there to know? He's a slob. Do you know he's got the George Medal? What, him? Yes, him. A slob. In his desk somewhere amongst the rubber bands and paper clips. He's never mentioned it. Well, he never thought he had to justify himself to you. How did he get it? When I've got time, I'll tell you. Right now, I'm busy. And if you're so worried about the overtime returns, why don't you get in there and do them? Denham Police? Mrs Preston? Karen doesn't come back? Don't worry. I'll get Mr Frost to phone you the minute he arrives. Morning, sir. Mr Cole's gone out, I'm told. Yes, sir. Damned alarm clock didn't go off, thank God. What are you doing? I'm trying to do the overtime returns. Some of your figures don't add up. Yeah, that's what I found out. Now, come on, leave them. We'll go down to the hospital and put the screws on the night porter. Well, do you think he's involved? Well, you know the rules, son. A man's guilty until he's proved innocent. Or is it the other way around? I can never remember. Oh, um, Mrs Preston phoned. Karen still hasn't come back. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll call her now on our way back from the hospital. Not today, thank you. Oh, good morning, sir. It's a uh, nice day. Morning, Frost. This office is a mess. We were just about to tidy it as you knock, sir. Clear the muck off that chair for the divisional commander, son. Yes, sir. Thank you, Constable. Uh, not a disguise, is it? The beard? No, sir. Some talk with the men not getting their overtime payment last month, Inspector. Uh, the computer, sir. I've sorted it out. Good, good. Do you know anything about last night's hit and run? Yes, sir. I saw the result of young Pym's butchery on the operating table. Roger Pym denies he was driving. He says his car was stolen. Oh, yeah. I've got Councillor Pym in my office. He's a personal friend of mine. Well, don't worry, sir. I won't tell anyone. I wonder if you'd find something to do outside, Constable? Certainly, sir. Listen to me, Frost. Not only is he a friend of mine, a close friend of mine, he is also a very important man in this town. Important and influential. I wouldn't expect you to have him as a friend if he wasn't, sir. How dare you? Uh, what I meant, sir, is that he's, well, he's got so many bad points, you wouldn't have him as a friend unless... Well, the good points outweighed the bad. You know what I mean, sir. 
If that's meant to be an apology, I'm not sure that it's adequate. Now, I'm taking you in to see the councillor, so would you please keep a civil tongue in your head? Don't I always, sir? No, you don't. Oh, and haven't you got a clothes brush? That suit. Frost? But I wanted Chief Inspector Cole. Uh, Mr Cull's tied up with this rape investigation, councillor, but Mr Frost is a very experienced officer. Uh, sit down, Frost. Thank you, sir. I understand you don't think your son is guilty, councillor. I don't think, I know. He may have his faults, but he's not a liar. We're all liars to varying degrees, sir, especially when it suits us. Shall I run over the facts as I know them? One, your son owns a flashy white sports car. Uh, it isn't flashy. I bought it for his birthday. Yeah, he's lucky, sir. I've got a pair of socks for mine. Now, they were flashy. <coughs> anyway, it's got a distinctive, raucous, uncharming horn which plays the first few bars of Colonel Bogey over and over again. He likes racing it around residential areas late at night, helping people stay awake by blaring the horn. We've been flooded out with complaints. All right. All right. High spirits. He's not a saint. If I suggested he was, sir, I apologise. His high spirits half killed a 78-year-old man last night. Your son knew he'd hit him because he stopped, then roared off again. My son wasn't involved. We've got witnesses, sir. They saw the car, heard the horn, took the registration number. There's impact marks on your son's car. The wing mirror is smashed. And last night I watched them digging chunks of wing mirror from the old boy's skull. Your son's involved, all right? He wasn't driving. The car was taken and driven without his knowledge. Yeah, good try. But he'll have a hell of a job proving it. It will be your job to prove it, Inspector. What? Or disprove it. The councillor has asked that I appoint a senior officer to examine this aspect. I'm appointing you. Thank you very much, sir. If you've got anything urgent, pass it on to Mr. Carl. Including the overtime returns? You told me you'd done them. High spirit, sir. I was lying. Uh, mm. You're not the frost who won a medal or something, are you? Yeah, they gave me one. But it was a long time ago. It was the George Medal, councillor. Ah, well. That does impress me. You know, there's always room for a George medalist in the PIM organisation. Play your cards right, Inspector. Get my son off the hook. And when you feel like leaving the force for a very well-paid job, come and see me. Do I understand you correctly, sir? Yeah, we mustn't detain the councillor, Inspector. All right. You're right. I've got to be going. We've got the auditors coming tomorrow and there's so much to do. Now, don't forget what I said, Inspector. I'm relying on you. Yes, sir. Right, goodbye, Stanley. See you at the club lunchtime. I'll try and make it, Arnold. Uh, Councillor. Uh, love to Gillian. Stuck up, pompous, overbearing little git. That will do, Frost. Your friend offered me a bribe, did you hear? A cushy job if I get Junior off the hook. Don't be ridiculous. He made you a very generous offer. No strings attached. No strings? Do you honestly think I'd still get the job if I sent his snotty-nosed son up for five years? I think I'd better leave before I go too far. That moment, Frost, has long since passed. Roger Pym was waiting for us in the interview room, watched over by a uniformed constable, PC Norton. Norton, young, good-looking, with an Errol Flynn moustache. I later learnt he had other Errol Flynn attributes. Hello, Norton. How are you? Still chasing everything in skirts? That's all in the past, Inspector. I'm a respectable married man now. Yeah, so was Crippin. Will you be much longer? I haven't got all day. Well, keep you a moment, sir. You'd better get back on your beat, Constable. Sergeant Wells is fuming. Right, sir. Sorry about that, Mr Pym. In a hurry, are you? I've got to get back to the office. Of course. Work for your father, do you? That's right. Point in your favour. I'm sure he wouldn't employ just anyone. He offered me a job. You? Yeah, surprised me as well. Got the gentleman's statement, Webster? Yes, sir. Beers are coming back. Did you know that, Mr. Pym? Now, what have we got here? Here's a laugh, sir. It says you weren't driving. Someone took my car and drove it off without my knowledge or consent. Like who? How should I know? That's your job. Car thief, perhaps? <laughs> More than likely. He pinches it, drives off at high speed, blasting the horn so as not to attract attention, runs over an old man, then carefully parks it back in the same place you left it. Leave off. I know I'm thick, but I can't swallow that. It could have been taken by someone who wanted to get me into trouble. I have my enemies, you know. Now, that I can believe. Let's see. Ah, oh, yes. You didn't go out at all last night. At 9pm, you parked the car around the corner from your flat, 
It was still there when you went to work this morning and you never noticed the damage until the police called at your office. The damage was not there when I parked last night. Of course it wasn't. You didn't knock the old boy down until one o'clock this morning. I didn't knock him down. And you didn't park the car around the corner from your flat either. A dirty great lorry was parked there since six o'clock yesterday evening. Well, sir? That's impossible. Hmm? Ah. Oh. Now, wait a minute. It... I remember now. There was a lorry there. I had to park in the next turning, uh, Norman Grove. Norman Grove? Make a note of that, would you, son? Yes, sir. Where precisely in Norman Grove, sir? So that we can prove your innocence for once and for all. I don't remember exactly. It was only last night. I don't remember. It was late and I was tired. Late? It was only nine o'clock. Get that, would you, son? Sir. Webster. Yes, I see. Yep, I'll tell him. Possible, sir. The old boy died ten minutes ago. Thank you. Exactly where in Norman Grove, Mr. Pym? I didn't park in Norman Grove. I wasn't at my flat. Oh? I stayed the night with a girl. I didn't want my father to know. Why, was she a scrubber? No. But he wouldn't have approved of her. You were with her all night? From nine until seven this morning. My car was outside her place where I'd left it. I spotted the damage and thought someone had shunted into me. I wasn't going to report it until I was well away from her flat. I take it you'd like to give us another statement, sir? Yes. Right. This will be statement number two, sir. Sir. And you will include the girl's name and address, won't you, sir? Just in case we should want to check up on you. Well, Inspector? Well, Miss King? It's about a gentleman called Roger Pym. Roger? Yeah, I understand you and he are uh, chumps. Very compact, these bedsitters, aren't they? You question the lady, would you, son? I seem to be asking questions all day today. Yes, sir. Uh, Miss King, would you mind telling us what you did last night from about nine o'clock onwards? Yeah, I was here in the flat. Mm -hmm. On your own? No, I was with a friend. Could I have his name, assuming it was a he? You know his name. Roger Pym. Master Pym, the councillor's son. It's like happy families. Where did he park his car? Are you taking over the questioning, sir? Sorry, son. Go on, go ahead. You're doing fine. What time did he arrive? Oh, little after nine. Did he spend the evening with you? He spent the night with me. He left this morning at seven. And where did he park his car? In the street. Just over the road. So from nine last evening until seven this morning, neither of you left the flat? That's right. Did he say anything about his car when he left? Yeah. Someone had smashed into it. Front was dented. He was furious. Yeah, the bloke who dented it wasn't too pleased either. Sorry, son, are you finished? Yes, sir. One question, Miss King. Very important. Now, what was it? Ah, yeah. Do you happen to have a mole on your nether region? <laughs> I beg your pardon? I think you heard me, miss. Just about here. Well, as it happens, I do. What's that got to do with it? Well, I don't know. I was uh, just admiring that photographic art study on your wall, and it occurred to me that the girl looked like you. Although it wasn't the face that caught my eye. It's a publicity photograph. I'm a showgirl, a dancer. Yeah, what I would call a stripper. Yeah. I work at the Purple Parrot. Well, well, isn't it a small world? Do you know a girl called Paula Gray? Another stripper? Yeah, of course I do. She's got the flat across the hall. One with the milk still outside. Do you know she was raped last night? Paula? Oh, no. Yeah, she's in Denton Hospital. Battered and bruised, but she'll live. Where's your television set? Um, I haven't got one. No, you're not missing much. It's gone right downhill since they sacked Muffin and Mill. But are you trying to tell me that you and him were stuck in here from nine o'clock and didn't go out? That's right. So what did you do with yourselves? No telly, one pokey little room. No, we're in love, Inspector. Do I have to spell it out to you? There are limits, Miss King. Now, I could stare at your mole for hours and want nothing more than a spam sandwich and a cup of tea. But young Roger isn't that home-loving type. He couldn't stay in this room. He'd want to get out, have a breather, drive his car, knock an old man down. I find you offensive. You're in good company. Will you be phoning in the hospital to inquire about your friend Paula? Of course. Well, when you do, ask how the hit-and-run victim is, will you? Get him to put you through to the mortuary. He's dead, didn't you know? He died two hours ago. It's a lot more serious now than you thought, isn't it? What about telling us the truth for a change, eh? I have told the truth. Roger was here with me. Now, will you please leave me alone? Where to, sir? Something to eat in the purple parrot. Turn left here. 
Do you think she was telling the truth, sir? There's an old saying, son, which I've just made up. Never trust a woman with a mole. Damn, I should have called on Mrs... Uh, what's her name? The missing bathing beauty. Remind me when we leave the purple parrot. Yes, sir. Tell me, son, do you shampoo it or run the vacuum cleaner through it? Shampoo it, sir. Go have a chair, Mr. Foster. Sorry I had to be out of here, just breaking in this new stripper. Yeah, we'll suffer. Try to stop your beard from quivering, son. <laughs> She's a cracker, this one. So, have you caught him? Not my case anymore. You'll have to ask Mr. Cole. Well, what are you here for? Uh, pleasure. Do you know Roger Pym? Oh, Councillor Pym, son, yeah, I know him. Comes here a lot, plays the tables. How's his luck? Oh, sometimes he wins, sometimes he loses. Trouble is, he never knows when to stop. Does he owe you money? I treat my client's affairs in the strictest confidence, Inspector. Highly commendable. Do you know his sports car? Well, the four-wheel Concorde. <laughs> Who doesn't? Yeah, he knocked down and killed an old man last night. Oh, this stupid young fool. What's that got to do with me? Well, he claimed he wasn't driving. Someone pinched it to stir up trouble for him. Someone with a grudge. Perhaps someone he owed money to. Well, he, he owed me money, but so do lots of people. His cheque bounced, so I queried it with him. Yeah, I know the two bruisers who do your query. My overdue account section. <laughs> anyway, he subsequently paid me. When did he pay up? Well, a couple of weeks ago. Nearly two and a half thousand quid cash. In cash? Where did he get that sort of money from? Well, I didn't ask. I was too busy counting it. <laughs> from his old man, I suppose. I understand he knocks about with one of your strippers. The one with the mole. Oh, Julie, yeah. Yeah, I thought she'd have had more taste, but there you are. Yeah, this new girl's damn good, isn't she? Mm, terrific. I was just admiring her. Yeah, she's better than Paula, uh, the one who was raped. Uh, I think I'll have to give her a car so she gets out of hospital. What a week this has been. It's even worse than you think, Mr. Hagen. What do you mean? Break the bad news to him, son. Bad news, sir? Blimey, son, you'll never make a copper. That stripper. Raise your eyes up, look at her face. Good Lord. Karen Preston. She's only 14, Mr. Hagen. Missing from what? home since last night. Corrupting a juvenile, assuming you've done nothing worse. I can't see them renewing your licence, can you? Oh, 14? Her? She looks younger dressed. Didn't you look at her birth certificate? Well, do me a favour, Inspector. That's the last thing I look at. Look, um, why don't we go to my office? Uh, perhaps you can see a way around this. Everybody wants to bribe me today. I must have a dishonest face. Go and get her, son. Me, sir? On my own? A 14-year-old schoolgirl. I don't need a riot squad, surely. Well, son, where is she? What's up with your face? She scratched me, sir. Scratched, clawed, bit and kicked. It was probably her way of saying she didn't want to go with you. Well, where is she? In her dressing room. Refuses to dress and refuses to come out. I've locked her in. Do you mean to tell me that a grown man, a highly trained police officer, can't bring in one innocent little child? She is not innocent, she's not little and she's not a child. Just watch me, son. I'll get her out of there using just one finger of my hand. My dialing finger. Well, who are you phoning? The station. To send a policewoman over. A policewoman? Yes, son. She'll be able to grab those parts a bearded young constable don't reach. Hello, Sarge. Frost here. Can you help me? I'm in desperate need of a woman. Fifteen minutes later, a panda car pulled up outside the club and PC Norton got out, followed by a woman police constable. Here you are, Mr. Frost. One WPC, delivered as requested. Thank you, Constable. I hope you kept your hands off her in the car. Most of the time, sir. What's the problem, sir? A 14-year-old stripper. My wounded colleague here will show you where she is. It was a struggle, but we got her into the car where she swore continuously and fluently all the way back to her parents' house. We dumped Karen on her grateful parents, and then we went to a pub and lingered over a couple of pints until even Frost couldn't think of any excuse why we shouldn't return to the station. But those overtime returns were fated. We had just got into the car. A control to all units. Armed robbery at Farnham Jewellers, 83 High Street. Owner reported shot. Charlie Alpha in attendance. Assistance requested. Hello, Control. Frost here. 
We're not far from the high street, we're on our way. We were there in five minutes. Farnham, the owner, was in a chair. PC Sutton was wiping blood from his face. Webster, turn that damned alarm off. Yes, sir. Keys in my pocket. Right. That's better. Have you sent for an ambulance? On his way, sir. But he's not badly hurt. Oh, it's a miracle I'm not dead. Callous sod fired straight at me. Shotgun, sir. Smashed that display cabinet. Flying glass did most of the damage. Burglar alarm still shut. That's metal grill. It's like a fortress. How did he get in? Well, it's half past five. I'm shut in the shop. Grills over the windows, shutters down, blinds pulled, door locked, and someone taps on the glass. Well, I unlock and open up, and I'm staring down the barrel of a shotgun. You're all locked up, with the blinds down so no-one can see inside, and you can't open the door because someone knocks? Yeah, well, it could have been a customer. Trade's not so good that I can afford to turn someone away just because I'm closed. Blimey, son, and they say I'm daft. Go on. Well, but he was about your height, stocking mask over his face, and he pushes me back in with the gun and locks the door behind him. And what did you say? Good evening, sir. Can I show you something? Yeah, all right. I was a fool. Don't rub salt in me wounds. He makes me lay face down on the floor, then calmly helps himself to the pick of my stock. All small, valuable items, over 10,000 quid's worth. Retail or wholesale? Retail. What's that, about 50 quid wholesale? Yeah, well, he stuffs it all into a plastic carrier bag. Then he digs the gun in my neck. And he tells me not to move for 10 minutes or he'll blow me head off. Well, I hear the shop door open and shut, and I'm up in a flash. I fling the door open and spot him climbing into a car. He pulled the stocking mask off. I saw his face. Would you recognise him again? Oh, I see a face once, so I never forget it. Yeah, I'd recognise him all right. And what about the car? It was dark grey Ford Capri. Well, Ford made a lot of dark grey Capris. Uh, not with the registration number MYL640P. You've got the registration number? Yeah. I'm starting to take to you, Mr Farnham. Has it been circulated? Yes, sir. Roadblocks are out. All patrols on the alert. And you've warned them that he's armed? Sir. Good. Sorry, Mr Farnham. Carry on. Well, he fired at me. I was by the door. He was at the curb. Point blank range. He could have killed me. But he hit the showcase. He probably meant to ski. No, he meant to kill me. I flung myself flat on the pavement and he drove off. And that's it. And if we showed you some photographs, do you think you could pick him out? No. 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 Any luck? Not yet. I've never seen so many ugly faces in my life. You're not showing him Mr Mallet's wedding photos, are you, son? Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, that's him. You sure? Positive. Well, 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 Freddie Bicknell. You know him, sir? Yeah, nabbed him a couple of times. Breaking and entering, demanding money with menaces, smash and grab. Never known him use a gun before. Yeah, well, he did today. He missed me my inches. 36 inches to be exact, sir. Don't worry, we'll get him. My jewellery? Might even get that as well. Thanks for your help, Mr Farnham. I'll keep in touch. Show the gentleman out, son. Right. This way, sir. Here. Oh, sorry, sir. That's all right, Constable. Well, Frost, how's it going? Shouldn't be any problem, sir. We know who did it. Freddie Bicknell. Marvellous. I let Councillor Pym know. He keeps phoning. Councillor Pym, sir? We are talking about the hit and run, aren't we? Oh, that's... Uh, I'm still pursuing my inquiry, sir. What is there to pursue? You've seen the girl. I understand she confirms his alibi. She does, but I think she's lying. You think, but you haven't got proof. Give me time. I'll find proof. Time? I've given you time. I've asked you to concentrate on this case. Give it top priority. And so I am, sir. Top priority. Excuse me. Webster, get me the file on Freddie Bicknell. Yes, sir. Sorry about that, sir. Uh, what we were talking about? The hit and run. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Top priority. Don't worry, sir. And Webster, tell Control it's Bicknell we're after. Frost. Damn. Yes, keep looking. I expect he's dumped it. <sighs> and what was all that about? The car Bicknell used in the armed robbery. It was reported stolen this afternoon. If this armed robbery is going to take up so much of your time, pass it over to Mr Cull. I want this hit and run tied up. Won't take any time at all, sir. We know who did it. He won't get far. We got the roads blocked. Councillor Pym phones me incessantly. It's getting embarrassing. I'll see the girl again tonight, sir. Number one priority. Yeah. I'll make a note on my pad. Where the hell is my pad? The file on Bicknell, sir. Let's have a look. 
Last known address, the Salvation Army Hostel three months ago. Brilliant. Oh, um, the hospital phone. The night porter from the Purple Parrot discharged himself this afternoon. Did he now? We must see him at his house. Make a note. Number one priority. <coughs> Number two priority. Number one is to see the stripper with a mole. Today, Frost. Without fail, sir. And you're not on the Purple Parrot case anymore. Quite right, sir. I forgot. She was only a stripper's daughter, so very good and kind. No blemish on her character, but a mole on her behind. Ah, when are we going to see her, sir? When we get time. Let Mallet's friends sweat for a bit. Yes! Oh, sorry to bother you, Jack. I can't take any more cases, Sergeant. I'm up to my armpits with shootings, cushions and strippers' moles. You haven't seen P.C. Norton in the travels, have you? Not since he brought Sexy Sue to the Purple Parrot. What time was that, sir? Uh, about half past four. Not since. No. Why? It's gone missing. Hasn't made any of his routine calls. He's supposed to report to me here at six. Hasn't shown up. Have you spoken to Mr. Cull? Not yet. Why? Well, don't you remember, sir? He said he had something on the anonymous phone caller in the rape case. You told him to see Mr. Cull. There's your answer, Bob. Mr. Cull. What it is to be popular. Come in! Ah, Mr. Cole's sergeant. Now, he'll tell us. These overtime returns, Mr. Frost. I can't read your figures. Yeah, I have the same trouble. We've lost PC Norton. Was he with Mr. Cole this afternoon? I couldn't say, sir. Uh, my afternoon for the police rifle range. Ask Mr. Cole. He's a good chap, will you? Right, sir. Don't worry, Bob. You know Norton. He's probably in bed with some woman and forgot the time. Whatever his faults, he's never once failed to report in on time. What's this about Norton? He never came to see me. He's missing. And sergeant Wells is worried. Hasn't reported in for over five hours, sir. Well, he's on panda patrol, isn't he? You can't lose a policeman and a panda. No one's seen him. He hasn't answered any of his calls. Perhaps his radio's busted. Yeah, like yours was last night. You tried his home? Yes, sir. And the hospitals. The armed robbery. What? Look at the map. The jewellers is here. The getaway car was seen heading in this direction. Norton was patrolling there. Well, you're suggesting Norton might have spotted the car and tried to stop it? Well, it's possible. And the man was armed. What do you think, Frost? Well, if there was a naked woman in a car, I'd have said yes. But a bloke with a gun... He'd have radioed. He wouldn't have tried anything on his own. Yeah, ignoring the innuendo, I'm inclined to agree with you. We're busy, Constable. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. It's important. Uh, Charlie Alpha's found Norton's panda. Where? In Green Lane, apparently abandoned. Door open, radio blaring, keen ignition, no sign of Norton. I've turned off the radio. Otherwise, it's uh, exactly as we found it. What's happened to the side window there? Uh, shotgun pellet, sir. Someone took a shot at the car. Not at the car, Constable. Look. That's blood. Then where is he, Frost? No idea, sir. I've got men combing the immediate area, mm. but the only theory that makes sense is that the gunman wounded him, then forced him into his own car as a hostage. But I can't see Freddie Bicknell doing that. He's one of my men. I want him found. I guess you might, sir. That's why I've got men out looking for him. Don't be insolent. Oh, sorry, sir. Yes? Mr Mullet. Oh, mm -hmm. we found Norton. Where? In a ditch, about three miles from the panda. Is, is he all right? No, sir. He's not all right. He's dead. He'd been dead for at least three hours. Shotgun wounds, chest and neck. Our armed robbery was now a murder case, far too important for Frost to mess up. Detective Chief Inspector Cull was put in charge of the investigation. Funny thing, son. Norton was a lousy copper, not worth a toss. But now he's dead, he's going to be the shining light of the force. When Mullet thought I was dying in hospital, I became a saint, a living legend. He couldn't sing my praises highly enough. But I had to go and spoil it all by pulling through. Uh, what do I do with these, sir? What are they? Mr. Cull's outstanding case files. I don't want them. I've enough rubbish as it is. Well, you've taken over all his outstanding cases so he can concentrate on the murder inquiry. Oh, and uh, here's the overtime returns back. Sorry I didn't have time to do them. Whose bright idea was this? Mine, actually, Frost. I want that killer. Norton was a damn fine police officer. Sort of the earth, sir. You've got the rape inquiry file there? I expect it's here somewhere, sir. Yeah, something else I want cleared up. Number one priority. Yeah, after the hit and run. Have you seen the girl yet? We were just going to go as you came in, sir. Good. And the overtime returns will go off tonight, won't they? If humanely possible, sir. Make it humanely possible, Frost. Oh, there's one other thing. Someone's got to break the news to Norton's wife. No one's told her yet? Mr. Carl thinks it might be better if you did it. He tells me you know her. About as well as he does, yes, sir. I'd have thought you would have done it. Uh, I'm not very good at that sort of thing. Um, take a woman police officer with you and tell Mrs Norton she has my deepest sympathy. Mm. Um, anything she wants, anything at all, just let me know. Yes, sir. Well, you heard what the man said, son. A woman police officer. See if sexy sewer the Navy knickers is still on duty, will you? Yes, sir. 
She was on duty, but wasn't at all keen to accompany Frost. We soon found out why. I stayed outside in the car while they went into the house. Yes, Mr. Frost. Hello, love. Do you think we could come in for a minute? You know WPC, Susan Dean? Get her out. Get that woman out of my house. Get her out! In the car, Sue. Sir? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I should have realised. Look, there's something I've got to tell you. Is he hurt? He's dead, love. Shot trying to stop a cowboy with a gun. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get him. <laughs> you don't understand. We'll get him. You just don't understand. I'm glad he's dead. Isn't that awful? I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> oh, I made a right mess of that, didn't I? You might have told me he'd been knocking you off, Sue. He hadn't been knocking me off. I went out with him once, twice. That was enough. I didn't realise his wife knew. Yeah, she knew all right. He told her everything, boasted about it. Getting himself killed was the only decent thing he ever did. How's Mrs Norton taking it? She'll survive, son. Let's get out of here. Right. The station? No, it's the hospital. I suppose we'd better see our rape victim. I'm not looking forward to it, but enough of frail weeping women for one night. Wait till I get my hands on him, Inspector. I'll tear him apart. I'm going to rape anybody else and I'll finish with him, I promise you. Calm down, Miss Gray. Now, what did he look like? How do I know? You must have some idea. Look, if we're going to catch this bloke, we've got to know something about him. You're the sixth woman he's attacked, and none of them could tell us what he looked like. Well, neither can I. He jumped me from behind. He chucked a plastic mac or, or something over me head, and then he threw me to the ground. He started punching me. I mean, I tried to claw his face. You got your hand to his face. Well, was he clean shaven? All I felt was cloth. He must have had a mask. Knocked my hand away. And then he just started punching. I kept thinking, please don't mark me. Do what you like, but please don't mark me. I'm a stripper, a purple parrot. I mean, I can't work if I'm marked. How bad am I? I mean, they, they, they won't let me have a mirror. You're Hill. Now, is there anything else you can remember about him? Oh. He had something on. Vest. Something like that. Vest? Why not a shirt? Well, go on. Well, that's it. He hit me and, and I passed out. You live in the same flats as Julie King, don't you? That's right. Well... Would you happen to know if she was in last night? Yeah. She had a boyfriend with her. Roger. Oh, Roger Pym. Oh, it looks as if I was wrong about him, son. Yes, sir. Now, do you know if Roger Pym went out at any time? Not as far as I know. Julie did, though. What? Oh, she went roaring past me in that sports car of his. I yelled after her. I, I was trying to catch a lift, but she didn't hear me. What time was this? Oh, uh, a bit before midnight. Oh, it's you. Good evening, Miss King. I've nothing more to say. I think you have. You were seen last night, seen driving Roger's car. It was you who ran the old boy down, wasn't it? Hmm? You'd better come in. Anyone in the room, Sergeant? Or yours, Inspector. Take her in, son, and get a statement, will you? This way, Miss King. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, a bad bit of stuff, Jack. Yeah, if you don't mind getting run over. Is our esteemed divisional commander in? How's Mrs. Norton taking it? Bearing up remarkably well, sir. Good, good. Well, Mr. Frost, first class officer. Uh, the overtime returns have gone off, haven't they? Uh, yes, sir. Excellent, excellent. County can't say that they weren't with them by first thing tomorrow. There'll be no overtime payments this month. Um, anything else? Yes, sir. We've eliminated Roger Pym from our inquiries mm. so far as the hit-and-run case is concerned. What? His girlfriend's given us a full confession. She was driving. She killed the old boy. This is marvellous. Uh, yes, get me Councillor Pym at his home, please. Urgent. <laughs> I must be the first to break the news. You'll be tickled pink. Well done, Frost. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you've made my day, Inspector. Uh, terrible about Norton, of course, but well, you've made my day. Um... No doubt about it. Roger Pym wasn't driving. He wasn't even in the car, sir. He was too busy coshing the night porter at the Purple Parrot and nicking three and a half thousand quid. What? He owed Hagen a packet for gambling debts, and Hagen was leaning hard on him for repayment. So he paid him by taking the money from the safe at his father's firm. Oh, my God. But the money had to be put back before his father found out. What better way than pinching it back from the Purple Parrot? 
Julie gave in me inside Jen. It was her on the phone to the security man. Mm. How does this fit in with the hit and run? Julie was going to be his alibi, yeah. pretending to be him in the car, roaring round and round the old people's huts. Hagen would have torn him apart if he'd have suspected he'd stolen his money. A watertight alibi, you'd have thought. But when she knocked down and killed the old man, it all went wrong. You've only the girl's word for this. She was seen driving the car, sir, and we found the balance of the money in her flat. Delta Tango's picking up young Pim now. Mullet. Oh, hello, Councillor Pim. Um, good news? No, I'm afraid it isn't exactly good news. Actually, it's rather the opposite. Sir. Uh, excuse me a moment. Yes, Frost. Ask him if the offer of a job still stands on. Get out, Frost. Get out. We charged the girl. We charged Roger Pym. Then it was panic to get the overtime returns completed, especially as Frost had told Mullet we'd already done them. We were both so full of ourselves for clearing up both the hit and run and the purple parrot robbery, we completely forgot our most important investigation. But not for long. Jack, Denton Woods, another woman attacked and raped. Oh. They were carrying her to the ambulance as we arrived. I caught a glimpse of her face. It was a mess. Give me the details, Smith. Uh, her name's Angela Newman, aged 19, audio typist. She'd had a row with her boyfriend on the way back from a disco. Wouldn't let him see her home. Took a shortcut through the woods. And he jumped her? Yeah, exactly the same pattern as all the others. Threw something over her head and beat her senseless. Who found her? Her boyfriend. Her parents were worried because she hadn't come home. He went out looking. Could she give a description? No, but uh, she didn't think he was wearing much. And the boyfriend saw nothing? He thought he heard a car driving off as he found it. Thanks, Sue. duty for hours. Yeah, over 16 hours, sir. Well, what do we know about this rapist? Nothing, sir. No, thanks, sir. Absolutely nothing. Now, now, son, don't get your whiskers in a twist. We know a couple of things about him. And look at this map. There's been seven attacks over the past eight weeks, right? Now, the first three took place here, Meads Common, right over the other side of town near Industrial Estate. The next two were here, one at Valentine's Park and one on a golf course. But his last two are way down here, Denton Woods. He covers a fair bit of ground, so what does that suggest? The car, sir? Hmm. The boyfriend was supposed to have heard a car driving off. Yes, all right, I'll buy the car. Next, he seems to be all stripped for action. Now, where would he leave his clothes? In the car. It sounds logical, and I bet it's not a small car. Why do you say that? Ever tried getting dressed in a hurry in a small car? It's not easy, is it, sir? <laughs> I wouldn't know, sir. Now, a biggish car, or a van. Oh, I've forgotten something. What's that? The anonymous phone caller. Norton was supposed to have found out who it was. Yes, but he was killed before he could tell anyone. He'd have had it in his notebook, son. He wasn't that bad a copper. Sergeant Wells! Sergeant Wells! You rang, my lord. Where's PC Norton's notebook? It's missing. His notebook missing? Wasn't on the body, wasn't in the panda. Mr Cole thinks he might have dropped somewhere when the killer dragged him into the getaway car. Any news on a getaway car, the uh, Ford Capri? No, but Bicknell's probably abandoned it by now. Yeah, I can't get over Freddy Bicknell shooting and killing a cop. It's not his style. Well, it's too late to think about it. What's the time? Three o'clock in the morning. Blimey, we're all on overtime. <gasps> overtime? Did we finish those returns, son? No, sir. What? Haven't they gone off? Jack, we'll have a mutiny on our hands when the salary checks come out. We'll do them, don't worry. 
You'll help us, won't you, sir? Yes, sir. But it's too late. They should have gone off to county in tonight's post. Yes, well, Webster can run them over by car. Drop them in the letterbox. Uh, it's an hour's drive each way. Fifty minutes at the most, if you're not too fussy about traffic lights. You don't mind, do you, sir? The only thing I didn't mind was that Sue offered to come along with me. It was nearly five in the morning before we dropped the completed return into County HQ's letterbox. I could hardly keep my eyes open until Sue suggested I spent what was left of the night at her place instead of driving back to Denton. I did a rapid mental inventory of her tiny flat. No sofa, no easy chair, one bed. Suddenly my tiredness vanished. I haven't got my pyjamas. I haven't got a nightdress. So it was full speed and the shortcut back to her place. The shortcut was my undoing. What is it? Over there. What? In the lane. A grey Ford Capri. Registration number MYL640P. Good work, Webster. You've saved us a hell of a lot of time. Sir. Any luck with fingerprints? Uh, nothing, sir. He's wiped it clean. A professional. He knew what he was doing. Someone talking about me? Hello, Frost. So this is where Bicknell switched cars, eh? Yes. Lucky your assistant spotted it. Yeah, it's the way I train them. Are you tired, son? Every night with Sue? No, sir. One thing about a beard, you don't get a five o'clock shadow. Sir! Hello. Your sergeant looks excited. I've got it, sir! What? PC Norton's notebook! Where was it? Other side of the hedge. How did it get there? Well, I'd have thought that was obvious. Bicknell threw it there. It fell from Norton's pocket in the car. He had to get rid of it. So he chucks it over a hedge, wipes every last trace of his prints from the car, but calmly chucks the notebook over a hedge. So what did you expect him to do? Swallow it? He couldn't carry it off with him. It was too incriminating. I want it checked for prints. Uh, Chief Inspector, a lady in number 23 said that there was another car parked here all day yesterday. A red triumph. Bicknell's car, I bet. Where is she? I want to talk to her. Uh, don't let me hold you up, Inspector. I want to have a look at the notebook. Yeah. Well, hold it carefully. I don't want your prints all over it. Tart. This must be it, son. The very last entry. Rupert Treadwell, Dove Cottage, Denton. Where's Dove Cottage? Oh, it's a, it's a broken down bungalow just north of Denton Woods. Got it. I know it. Right, Webster. We'll go and see him. We'll dump Sue off first. She looks ready for bed. Oh. You say something, son? Oh, uh, if you must. Uh, it's all in a mess. It's a palace compared with my place, Mr. Treadwell. Do you have kippers for breakfast? Um, not since last week. Don't mind if we have the window open, do you? I believe you had a visit from one of our constables yesterday. Oh, yes. Uh, P.C. Norton. Good-looking boy. Um, uh, sit down, if you like, but be careful. The cat's been sick somewhere and they haven't found out where yet. Yeah, well, we'll stay in, thank you. Why did Norton call on you? Oh, he, he guessed it was me who phoned up the other night about that poor girl, the stripper. Guess? How did he guess? Wait a minute. Rupert Treadwell, I remember you. You like prowling the woods late at night, don't you? Spying on cavorting couples. It's a job to avoid them. Yeah, and I'm sure you try hard. Anyway, you found her and phoned us, but you didn't give your name. I, I didn't want to be involved. Well, you are now, Sonny Jim. Did you see anyone? No, only the jogger. What jogger? I don't know. He was some way off. He was crossing the path way ahead of me as I was running to phone. How was he dressed? Oh, running gear, shorts, a singlet, and he was carrying something. What? I don't know. A small bundle, black, I think. I, I only caught the merest fleeting glance. Uh, all this harassment. I did my duty. I could have left her, you know, and told nobody. It was a bit under the arm in there, son. No wonder his cat was sick. <laughs> Do you think the joggers are rapists, sir? It fits a bill, son. Singlet, running shorts. Very convenient for the quick strip. Yeah. And the bundle could be the plastic Mac or whatever it is he chucks over their heads. Yeah, the complete rapist kit. Oh, but the next step is to get some kit. I feel as I've been up all night. So you're in at last, Inspector. Have you seen the local paper? Another woman raped. Police accused of gross incompetence. Take it up with your friend, Councillor Pym, sir. He owns the Echo. And the Chief Constable reads this. How close are you to solving this case? I don't give estimates, sir. You're in no position to be flippant, Frost. I want some action. 
Now, Mr. Cowell, draw up a list of likely suspects. I want them all brought in and questioned today. I want this case tied up. That's not all you want. What's this list of suspects he's rambling on about, son? Here, yes, sir. List of suspects? It's more like the London Classified Telephone Directory. There must be every known sex offender in the country here. Fred the Flasher? We can knock him out for a start. He'd never rape anyone. His is for display purposes only. God, it's going to take us weeks to get through this lot. We could start with the more likely ones. Yeah, and if our bloke hasn't got a record, we'd be wasting all our time, wouldn't we? Hmm. Uh, any point trying the local athletics club, in case our jogger's a member? No, sir. We haven't got time. This fella's going to end up killing one of his victims if we don't move fast. He's going to try again tonight, in the woods. How do you know? A hunch. My hunch has never let me down. Well, not more than 50% of the time. You know, he must wait and watch. And when he sees something he fancies, he strikes. If you notice, all these victims have been big-chested, young bits of stuff. Not a granny amongst them. Now, suppose we were to provide him with an irresistible victim. A decoy? Exactly. Sir? No, sir. You want me, sir? I want to bait a trap for the rapist. What would I have to do? Even with all the men we needed, Frost's slapdash organization would have left far too many loopholes for success. But with only one police car and a couple of men, our forces were too few and too thinly spread. It was doomed to failure right from the start. What's the time, son? Nearly midnight. We're too far back from the path. We'll never get to her in time. We've got to keep out of sight. The object of the exercise is to nab him, not to scare him off. Charlie Alpha to Frost. Charlie Alpha to Frost. Yeah, Frost. By entering woods. Any sign of a mouse? Negative. Thank you. Over and out. See if she's radio range, son. Right. Hello, Sue. Can you hear us? Over. Loud and clear. I'm on the path by the big oak. No sign of anyone. Here, give it to me, son. Sue? We're about 50 to 60 yards back from the path, moving parallel to you. We daren't come closer in case he spots us. Now, if you see or hear anything the least bit dodgy, call us. Scream if necessary and we'll come running. Right, sir. And don't forget, give us a check call every five minutes. Understood. Over and out. Come on, son. Wait. What Wait. is it? Brown was caught in your beard? I thought I heard something. Like what? I don't know. Just thought I heard something. Frost to Fletcher. Did you hear anything? No Fletcher here. Negative, sir. How long since her last radio check? Four minutes. Shall I call her? No. He's within earshot of her. Our call could frighten him off. Let's keep moving. We can't let her get too far ahead. She should have reported in by now. Give her another half minute. She's not staring at her wristwatch count in the seconds. Yeah, but she knows she's got to check in every five minutes. Well, she won't do it if she knows he's near her. Oh, right, call her. Right. Frost to bait. Frost to bait. Come in, please. Sue, come in, please. Okay, son, let's find her. Right. Frost to all units, move in. Which way? Go left. If she's in trouble, she wouldn't have reached this far. There she is. She was on the ground ahead of us, clothing torn, face bleeding. In the distance, something white crashed through the bushes. After him, son. Right. Frost all units. Webster in pursuit of assailant. Sector three, heading north to road. Assist him. Sue? Waiting ahead of me through something black over my face. Couldn't see. Kept hitting me. I'm sorry. No, love, no, it's me who should be sorry. I sodded it up. I couldn't see. C couldn't breathe. That's all right. Just take it easy, love. Any luck, son? <sighs> Chased him to a car. He drove off. You sure it was him? Yes, sir. How are you, Sue? She's beaten up pretty badly. Call an ambulance. I don't right. want an ambulance. I'm all right. I just want to go home. All right, sir, but we'll get you a doctor. 
Charlie Alpha to Frost. Come in, please. Frost? We've got him, sir. We've got him. But our triumph was short-lived. In the driving seat of the car was a naked man. In the back seat, frantically trying to get dressed, was a naked woman. They were married, but not to each other. We'd flushed out a pair of illicit lovers. I don't know which of us were the more embarrassed and disappointed. Frightfully sorry, sir, madam. Anyone would think it was only their evening that was ruined. Fletcher to Frost. Come in, Fletcher. I've got him, sir. Are you quite sure, Constable? I couldn't stand another disappointment. A positive, sir. He's carrying a black plastic mac. It's bloodstained. We're on our way. There was something vaguely familiar about the man Fletcher was guarding so carefully. Really, Mr. Frost, this is intolerable. Rupert Treadwell, oh, God. Let him go, Constable. He's not a rapist. He's a peeping Tom. He was carrying this, sir. You're right, Fletcher. They are bloodstains. Right, Mr. Treadwell, where did you get this? He dropped it. Who? The man, the jogger. Describe him. Oh, darkish, medium build. He, he had running shorts on. There's something in the Mac pocket, sir. Show me. Front door key. Big deal. All we've got to do is try every house in the country, and if it fits, we've got him. Rather like Cinderella. Yeah, I knew you'd be interested in fairy stories. All right, Fletcher, you big old king brute. Drive the gentleman home and no pretending to run out of petrol on the way, eh? <laughs> this was the most ill-conceived bodge-up. A disgrace. How is Sue? Bit battered about the face, sir, but no lasting damage, thank God. But no thanks to you. Have you salvaged anything at all from this disaster? This man? Do you know who he is? No, sir. Or what he looks like? Medium height, medium build. We've got his Mac in his door key. A mass-produced plastic Mac and an untraceable door key. You're a dead loss, Frost. I shall have seriously to consider your future with this division. I shall have seriously to consider your future. Why can't you split your infinitives like the rest of us useless louts? What's this, Jack? Talking to yourself? Do I hear raised voices? No, oh, just our revered divisional commander give me my usual good conduct medal. Close the door, Percy. I've got a bottle of whiskey here for medicinal purposes. Care to join me? Not when I'm on duty, Jack. Neither should you. The trouble is, he's right. I bodged it. I could have got her killed. She knew the risks. It was her job. Yeah, and it was my job to see it didn't happen, wasn't it? I'd go easy on that if I was you, Jack. Didn't you see the lights? They were red. You nearly killed me. Oh, I'm sorry, lady. It's my night for nearly killing people. Hey, you're drunk. I'm calling the police. Wait a minute. You're Frost, aren't you, Detective Inspector Jack Frost? Your servant, ma'am. Do I know you? You ought to, the number of times you had me up for soliciting. Kitty Reynolds. <laughs> Still in business? I <laughs> gave it up years ago. Seen her put a dent in your car, love. Yeah, you have, you drunken pig. But forget it, I'm insured. Kitty, you're a saint, doll. Mm. Oh, you a few favours. All the blind eyes you turned. Well, I could have gotten into serious trouble. I don't remember. If I did, it was a pleasure. Oh, well, I better get on, I suppose. Ed, you're too drunk to drive. You come home with me. I'll soon sober you up. Oh, this coffee's flaming hot. Drink it. It'll do you good. So you packed the old game in, eh? I had to. I was getting past it. I'm past it, but I still carry on. My, well, we are sorry for ourselves tonight, aren't we? Have some more coffee. I hate to say it, Kitty, but whatever men found irresistible about you, it certainly wasn't your coffee. <laughs> It'll sober you up. I'm not sending you back to your wife in that state. My wife's dead. She died last year. Oh, I'm sorry. Must be lonely for you now she's gone. It was lonely when she was alive. We didn't get on too well. So you're sobering me up for nothing. You can stay here tonight if you like. What? If you're going deaf, Jack, forget it. Are you trying to take advantage of me just because I'm drunk? Drunk or sober, you wouldn't look so bad if you got yourself a decent suit. I thought this was a decent suit. Look at it, frayed cuffs, button coming off. 
I'll sew it on for you before you go. You sew as well? You'd be surprised at what I can do. Control to Inspector Frost. Control to Inspector Frost. What the hell's Frost. that? It's an electronic chastity belt. Frost. Well, sir, Inspector, you asked to be informed of any incidents in the vicinity of Denton Woods. Intruder reported in back gardens of Dorset Crescent. Foxtrot X-ray investigating. I'm on my way. Loose button and all. Mr. Adams, Detective Inspector Frost. Sorry to bother you so early, sir, but it's about this backyard intruder. Again? I had your uniform in here last night. Yeah, I know, sir, but there's a few more details. Can I come in? Right. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, just to recap, let's see if I've got my facts right. As I understand it, just after 1.30 this morning, a woman four doors away saw a man lurking in her backyard. She screamed and he made off over the fences in this direction. Uh, that would be Mrs Shadbolt, uh, number 62. Uh, Shadbolt. That's right, sir. A neighbour heard her screaming and dialed 999. Our chaps arrived, searched the back gardens and found your back door had been forced. I knew nothing about it until they knocked me up. I was fast asleep. Did he take anything? I don't think he even got in. Your chaps must have scared him off. Yeah, more than likely. Charming house, Mr. Adams. You lived here long? I only moved in four weeks ago. You get a good view of the woods from here. There's a spot of bother there last night. A man tried to assault a young woman. You didn't see or hear anything, I suppose? I went to bed at ten. Uh, when I sleep, I sleep. Like me. Uh, where did you live before you moved here? Thorley Drive. I know it. Other side of Denton, near the golf course. Are you married, Mr. Adams? Yes. And where's your good lady? What do you want her for? Well, there's a rapist in the area. I want to warn her about going out at night on her own. Where is she? Uh, she's gone to Darlington, looking after her mother. She's very sick. Sorry to hear that, sir. Must be a bit lonely for you without her. When did she go? Sunday. She'd have missed all the excitement, then. Our rapist didn't start his larks until Monday. When's she due back? Depends on her mother. Saturday, I hope. Oh, that's all right, then. I'm sure our rapists will have packed it in by then. Uh, forgive me, Inspector, but uh, what has this got to do with this intruder? It's just possible, sir, that the intruder and the rapist are one and the same. Just possible. We have to clutch at straws sometimes. What work do you do, Mr Adams? Night maintenance man at Prufton's Engineering Works. Night work? What hours do you work? 10pm to 6am, four nights a week. Anyone else work with you? No. Don't you find it uh, a bit lonely? No, oh, I like it. No one breathing down my neck. Factory all to myself. Yeah, and I suppose you can always, uh, like, nip out when you want to. No one would know, eh? My firm trusts me not to nip out. The first three attacks took place at Meads Common. It's not far from your factory, is it, sir? Then there was that student nurse at Valentine's Park and the teenager on the golf course, very near to where you used to live. You move here and he starts operating in the woods. As I say, sir, you... You do get a nice view of the woods from here, don't you? Just what are you insinuating? My house is broken into and you barge in, almost accusing me of multiple rape. I'm not almost accusing you of anything, sir. There was an attempted rape last night. The man got away wearing running shorts and a singlet, which don't have pockets. But he dropped a black plastic mac. Now, I reckon he must live quite close to the woods, like you do. Like many people do, but he could live miles away. He could have, he could have a car. Then we'd have found his car keys in his mac pocket, wouldn't we, sir? As it was, all we found was a door key. So how does he get back into his house? Can't knock up the wife. She's away visiting her sick mother. Yeah, I haven't left the house all night. Not easy to break in through the front door, but the back door, oh, yeah. Tell you what puzzled me about this intruder, Mr Adams. 
Mrs Shadbolt spots him clambering over a fence and screams blue murder. Now any self-respecting burglar would then get the hell out of there before the police came. But this joker climbs a couple of more fences, then starts forcing opening your back door, knowing the fuzz was going to arrive any second. Didn't make sense. Unless, of course, he uh, just wanted to get inside his own house. Hmm? The intruder might have been your rapist, Inspector, but it wasn't me. I swear it. Then I'm wrong, sir, and I apologise. Do you think you could come down to the station and uh, give us a statement, sir? Would it take long? That depends, sir. Excuse me, I'll ask my colleague. Foster Webster? Yes, sir. Would you come in for a minute, son? On my way, sir. He won't be long, sir. He's only outside. No, no, don't bother to uh, let him in. He's got a key. And would you care to try on that black plastic Mac for size? My wife won't have to know, will she? Please, you won't tell my wife. Sergeant Wells! Yes, Jack? Tell him, son. We've caught the rapist. So I've heard. Oh, where's the cheering crowds, then? I was hoping for a ticker tape welcome with Malik kissing my feet. But Frost, who could never do anything right, had completely mucked up his timing. His moment of triumph was overshadowed by a greater drama taking place some three miles away. Chief Inspector Cull had tracked down Bicknell, Norton's killer. What? Got him cornered in the house of Whitchurch, surrounded by armed police. Bicknell's holding a woman hostage. Armed police? Against Bicknell? Inspector Cole's an idiot! Absolute idiot! Where are you going, Jack? Get after him, Webster. I think he's going to do something stupid. <laughs> That's par for the course, Sarge. Quick, man, this is serious. Yes, Sarge. Keep those people back, Constable. If he fires again, someone's going to get hurt. Now, oh, come along, please. Get back. Get back. Chief oh, Inspector oh, Carl, oh, Sandy no, Lange, Anton Echo. What's the position? Uh, What's the uh, Bicknell's in the house, that oh, top room. He's holding a woman way. hostage. Has he got a gun? Yes, a shotgun. The gun he used to kill one of my constables. Are your men armed? Only my sergeant. He's a trained police marksman. He's working his way over those rear gardens so they can get a direct aim through the window. Now, if you'll excuse me. Bicknell! This is Chief Inspector Cull. Can we talk? What a car with a full tank! I'm taking the woman with me. If I'm followed, or if anyone tries to stop me, I'll kill her! Release the woman, and we'll talk about it. You won't really give him a car, will you? I'm keeping him talking while my sergeant moves into position. Sir, in the garden, someone's moving towards the house. Well, it's Frost, the damn fool. If Bicknell sees him, give me that loud hailer. What about it, Bicknell? Release the woman, and we'll talk about the car. Bicknell? <laughs> Frost. Don't come any closer, Mr. Frost. I have nothing to lose. You don't want to shoot me, Freddy. Come on. I'm the only one who can help you. Now chuck it in. You want to get yourself killed? <laughs> They're out to kill me anyway. What chance have I got? The way you're going on, no chance at all. Now you've got no intention of arming that bloody woman, so let her go. She's terrified. No way, Mr. Frost. No way. Oh, What's going on? A proper cock-up, sir. I'd almost talked him into letting the woman go when Frost barges in to do his Errol Flynn act. Frost has gone in there. I'll crucify him. Someone's coming out, sir. What? Oh, Wait, it's the woman. Yeah, go and help her, Constable. Cal, what's the chance of your sergeant hitting Bicknell? We'd risk hitting Frost, sir. Don't tempt me, Chief Inspector. What are they doing now? Bicknell's got his gun on Frost, but they seem to be talking. God is my judge, Mr. Frost. That's the honest truth. You've got to believe me. With a shotgun point in my gut, I'll believe anything. <laughs> it's empty, Mr. Frost. <laughs> I fired my last cartridge 15 minutes ago. <laughs> Look. Uh -oh. Freddy! 
Freddy! You've killed him, you silly sod! You've killed him! Nothing more to see. Move on, please. Move on. I didn't know. I didn't know. You're not expected to know, Sergeant. Mm. If a known killer points a gun at a police officer and pulls the trigger, you're entitled to assume it's loaded. I quite agree. The person reproaching himself should be you, Frost. Your conduct was inexcusable. Report to me in my office. Three this afternoon. Yes, sir. I think we'd better have a word with the press. This way, Chief Inspector. Sir. So you saved my life then, Sergeant? Well, I didn't know the gun wasn't loaded, sir. No, I believe you. But you knew he wasn't a killer. Sir? He did the job at the jeweller. He admitted that. But he swore to me he never killed Norton. Never saw him. He didn't know he was dead until he heard it on the radio. But what was Norton's notebook doing in his car? You tell me. You found it. Or you said you did. You own a shotgun, don't you? So? And you had it with you that day. You'd been to target practice at the police range. But you left early. Why was that? Well, I, I promised my wife I'd be in early. No. You told her you'd be in late. I checked. You suspected Norton was knocking her off, didn't you? So you sneaked back early and caught them in bed together. No. No, not in bed. He was... His panda car was tucked away in the side street and the curtains were drawn. I waited outside. When he came out, he saw me. Died for his panda and was away. I chased after him in my car and forced him to stop in Green Lane. Well, I, I was left. He was laughing, taunting me. The shotgun was on my back seat. I only meant to frighten him. I don't even remember pulling the trigger. I, I dragged him into my car to rush him to hospital. But he was dead. I dumped him, then I went home. I didn't know what I was going to do. I think I was stealing myself to tell someone. Then you heard about the armed robbery? Everyone assumed Bicknell had killed him. And the notebook? Found it in my car, wedged between the seats. So you dropped it near the getaway car and pretended to find it? Yeah. Planting false evidence? Yes. So it's a godsend for you that Bicknell's dead, well, isn't it? You've got to believe me, Mr Frost. I really thought he meant to kill you. Suppose you hadn't shot him, and he was charged with Norton's murder. Would you have owned up? I don't know. He was guilty of armed robbery, probably would have got life for that anyway. I didn't mean to kill Norton. And Bicknell's dead. Everyone thinks he did it. I mean, can't we leave things like that? Hasn't Norton's wife suffered enough? Yeah, all very logical, Big one. And very tempting. But the trouble is, you see, I'm a cop. Not a very good one, perhaps, but a cop. I don't even know really why I became one, to be honest. But I didn't become one to cover up facts, to turn a blind eye to planted evidence, to let a dead man even if he was a crook, be wrongly accused of murder. Now, your way would be easy. You'd keep everyone happy, wouldn't it? But it'd be wrong, son. And I couldn't do it. So that's it, then. It had to be you, didn't it? I'm always around when I'm not wanted. Now, why don't you nip over and have a quiet word with Mr Cole before he makes a fool of himself with the press? Well, are you coming? No. Keep my name out of it. It'll sound better if it... You know, if you do it all off your own back. Yeah. Mr. Cole, can I have a word, please? Mr. Frost. Oh, hello, son. Been there long? A while, sir. You didn't hear anything, I suppose? No, sir. Yeah, that's the idea. Listen, you had anything to eat? Not yet, sir. Well, look, I'm due to see Mr. Mullet for a rollicking at three. I ain't being taught a bit on an empty stomach. Let's go and find a calf. Yeah, you haven't seen a button off my jacket, have you? In A Touch of Frost by R.D. Wingfield, Detective Inspector Frost was played by Derek Martin, Webster, Hayden Wood, Chief Inspector Cull, Stephen Thorne, and Superintendent Mullet, Alan Dudley. Sergeant Wells, Ellis Dale, Fletcher, Stanley Page, Susan Dean, Jill Lidston, Ingram, Gordon Reed, and Smith, Andrew Byatt. Paula Gray, Alex Marshall, Kitty Reynolds, June Brown, 
and Rupert Treadwell, Richard Gold Parry. The play was directed by Peter King.